say our lives begin one step at a time. A stepping stone is usually one of a series used to step on as in crossing a stream or a difficult pathway. It is also referred to as a means of advancement and success. Hello, my name is Mike Dupel, and today we present Stepping Stone of San Diego, a wonderful organization dedicated to providing individuals the ability to live a life free of addiction. And joining us are John D. Miranda, the president and CEO of Stepping Stone, Bitsy Craig, the director of development, and Edgardo Rivera, a graduate of Stepping Stone San Diego. John, Bixie, Eduardo, welcome to Pace TV, and thank you for being here. Nice to be here. Well, John, you're up number one. You're the boss, the CEO. Tell us, what is Stepping Stone San Diego? Stepping Stone of San Diego is a special place. Uh, it came into existence over 35 years ago as a result of a community need. The, the issue was that people who were lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transgender were not able to access or be comfortable in traditional alcohol and drug treatment programs. So a number of activists came together and said, let's start our own place. And that was the birth of Stepping Stone. Today we're celebrating our 35th anniversary. During that period, we've become a nationally recognized, nationally acclaimed, and one of the very few LGBT-specific treatment programs in the country. And we're known for our innovation and our progressive programs. Uh, I think there's a probably no more than three programs like Stepping Stone anywhere in the U.S. So as I said, it's a special place. Well, thank you for that. Congratulations on your 30th anniversary. You. And Bixie, give us a little more of the background of um, Stepping Stone San Diego. Stepping Stone's humble beginnings date back to early 1976. That's before Betty Ford came out as an addict. Um, back then, uh, a woman called Arlene J met with her sponsor and had a conversation which started what would become Stepping Stone. Her sponsor suggested that she volunteer outside of Alcoholics Anonymous, and so she went downtown to the office of the National um, Council on Alcoholism and started to volunteer. On her first day there, she met a gay man who shared with her that uh, they had been receiving 12 to 14 calls a day from people that identified as gay and said, we need help, this is the, the program is not working for us. And so she and 11 other individuals formed a committee and developed and conceptualized what would become Stepping Stone. It became a nonprofit, a 501c that same year and opened a residential facility in Golden Hill. And in the late 1970s, the property um, on Central Avenue where the new facility is located at was rented um, by the founders and um, operated at 28 beds supported by the county alcohol and drug services at the time. And other landmarks down the road were um, 1989, uh, Cheryl Hauk, who became uh, the executive director for, uh, for 17 consecutive years, uh, was hired as the administrator at the time. And the 1990s were marked by um, funding for um, outreach, uh, uh, um, HIV sup um, AIDS support services mm -hmm. in response to the AIDS crisis. More workshops were became available. And then um, in, the, in 1997, um, Stepping Stone launched a capital campaign to build uh, the new state-of-the-art treatment facility, which last year just celebrated 10 years. So Shell Hauk is, um, is it was instrumental in, in the building of what we call the stone. It's a, it, it's a beautiful um, architectural um, landmark uh, designed by the Grading and Thomas award-winning facility that holds um, 32 beds and a, a lot of, um, our, of um, our programs, activities, as well as public events take place at this facility. Oh, great. Now, what's the exact address, Bixie? It is 3767 Central Avenue in City Heights. Mm -hmm. And I had the pleasure of being there. It's a wonderful organization. And you've been able to, uh, to use every square inch of space. You've utilized everything. Now, but, but John and Bixie, tell us why, why you're successful. What are what are your programs like that the others are not? 
And mm -hmm. why are you so unique? Well, there's a couple things, I think, about Stepping Stone that are unusual. Um, and, and let me say that while we focus on the lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender community, we also have people there who are not from those communities. So it, it's, well, everybody is welcome at Stepping Stone. I think that we work with clients who have a lot of needs, and we have to be kind of creative in our programming and in our responses. And that leads to some of the innovation that I mentioned. For example, a number, a number of years ago, we realized that in addiction treatment, uh, it's important to, do, to pay attention to a person's sexual behavior. And this is something that is not addressed uh, directly in most treatment programs, but we decided we really needed to. And with the help of a local um, uh, practitioner, Doug Brown Harvey, we developed something called Discovering Sexual Health and Recovery, which is a 10-week course for our clients to uh, understand the role of sexual uh, behavior and their drug addiction. Um, similarly, many of the people we work with are marginalized. They're HIV positive. There's, there are certain aspects of society that are not um, uh, supportive of, their, of them as people. So we teach an advocacy component in our program uh, where we expect people, after they are firmly established in recovery, to participate in the kinds of activities and programs that are designed to change societal attitudes towards drug addicts, people who are LGBT, people who are HIV positive. And these are two very unusual features for most, uh, and very different from most addiction treatment and recovery programs. Mm -hmm. So you have various programs that you deal with depending on the need. Yes, we, after someone goes through our six-month, 31-bed residential primary treatment program, we have supported living or sober living homes available. Uh, and this is kind of a transitional house. This is a place where someone has less supervision, less restriction. They're expected to be working or going to school and basically having one foot in the community. Mm -hmm. So we operate two sober living facilities that provide that. We also provide HIV support services for people who are HIV positive. Because m many times people come to Stepping Stone, their lives are really a mess, and as we're asking them to get their health in order, their dental care in order, they find out that they're testing positive for HIV. So then we plug them into services, make sure they're on the right medications, and basically uh, they've got kind of a dual track. Not only are they dealing with early recovery from addiction, but they're also coming to terms with the fact that they're HIV positive. Um, and many of our staff, many of our alumni, and many of our existing clients are also HIV positive. So they serve as a role model for these new people who, who can see that um, that is a chronic condition, it's a serious condition, but it's, it's really uh, something that can be managed. So how do you interface all of these programs? There are some that are uh, dealing with certain specific addictions and some for others. How does that vary? Well, we have a wonderful staff. We have a wonderful staff that's driven both by their professionalization, um, certified, licensed, social workers, et cetera, but also by their passion. Uh, some of our staff have been through the program and are graduates of the program. Many are in long-term recovery themselves. Some are HIV positive. So we can always expect 120% um, from our staff, and they can multitask like crazy. Great, great. Now, Eduardo, yes. you are a graduate. I am. Tell us about uh, your experience with the stone, if you will. Well, my experience with the stepping stone has changed my life. Um, and um, I, I graduate from stepping stone, I graduated in 2004, and I continue to stay involved with them as much as I can. Um, you know, I, I attend meetings there weekly, and I try to work with uh, newcomers, which are new people who have come to the program. Um, I also try to help them, guide them through uh, the 12 steps of recovery. Um, and, um, and uh, obviously, you're, you're good at what you do, you wouldn't be doing it. Well, uh, well, I mean, I thank the program for that, because yeah. I, if I didn't have that exactly. first, you know, introduction to the recovery, I wouldn't be where I'm at. Now, how has your life changed, Eduardo, since you've been involved in the program? Well, my life has changed tremendously. Um, I, uh, my life was a complete mess before I came into Stepping Stone. Um, I was not employable. I didn't have my family in my life. Um, and um, the first day I walked into Stepping Stone is how it, you know, 
I was I was broken, um, and um, my sister is the one who actually introduced me to this program, and she had an intervention with my family, and uh, they brought me to uh, Stepping Stone where I began my 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 change of life. I couldn't. You know, I'm nervous now, but I couldn't even speak well. You know, I couldn't put sentences together. I couldn't, um, I couldn't interact with my family. Mm -hmm. You know, there was a lot of issues, not only from the drugs and alcohol that I needed to deal with, but outside issues, you know, family counseling, um, and also, um, you know, abusive relationships, and, um, and also depression. Mm -hmm. So um, not only did Stepping Stone help me you know, get a handle on my drugs and alcohol, but they also, you know, guided me to um, the right channels to deal with my other issues that I had. Would you say that it was a lifesaver for you? Absolutely. Yeah. It is a life-changing experience, and that's why I try to, you know, be connected and stay as much connected with Stepping Stone as I can, which is volunteering or is helping trying to raise money for them and, um, not only for me, for other people that are still out there suffering. Now tell us about the raising of the money, because you raise money for specific needs, do you not? I raise money for whatever I can do for Stepping Stone, whether it's special needs or whether it's for um, people who have just entered into the program. Um, Stepping Stone puts on a lot of fundraisers, and um, I donate my services to them as much as I can. You know, I, I cut hair for a living, so you know, residents come to the salon, get their hair cut, for free, or I can go on location and cut their hair, what mm -hmm. whatever is needed or asked by Stepping Stone, I, I try to do. Now, some of the new people that come into your into your environment, some may be destitute, have nothing, right. came from the street, do not have a change of clothes, do not have a toothbrush. Right. And I understand you're part of the getting funds together for mm -hmm. those basic needs. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, we... Um, like I, m I personally myself, what I do is I help donate, you know, clothes, you know, as much as I can, um, or whatever I can do. Like I said, for the organization, um, it's giving back, right? Yeah, giving back, way to go. Now, John, give us a typical day at the at the song. How does it how does it start? Well, it's seven o'clock in the morning. We start with med call, uh, maybe even earlier. Some of our clients may be in the fourth phase of treatment and already working and back in the community. So some people may need to get their meds pretty quickly, uh, have a, a bag uh, breakfast ready for them so they can get out to public transportation and get to work. Uh, most staff gets there about between seven and nine. Uh, there's a community meeting in the morning that's largely logistics. What's gonna be happening today? Who's going where? Who's in charge of this? And uh, our clients really kind of run the program in many ways. So there'll be somebody who's the liaison that day and they are responsible for carrying messages between clients and appropriate staff if there's some business that needs to be taken care of. Who's in charge of the kitchen? Who's going to make sure that the tables are set and that the meals are, are coming out on time? Then there'll be a series of uh, therapy groups on site for people who are in the earlier stages of treatment. People in the later stages might be out in the community at doctor's appointments, uh, job interviews, um, dinners around 5 o'clock, there's often a community meeting where uh, the local 12-step community, either Narcotics Anonymous or Alphonse Anonymous or Smart Recovery, will come in and put on a meeting on site that our clients will attend, which is a good way to get people connected to people in the community and get mm -hmm. them kind of thinking about who are their friends out there, who can they, uh, who can they look to, both while they're at Stepping Stone and later. Thursday nights, there's a family therapy group, so family members come in and participate. Uh, there's a lot going on. Lights out around 10.30, mm -hmm. and uh, then on the weekends there are all kinds of kind of extracurricular activities. So there's the one person that coordinates all this, or do you do it by... Well, it's a team. It's really a team approach. We have a director of operations, Catherine Aquino, who really kind of oversees uh, and makes sure that the mechanisms are all working. Mm -hmm. But we really have a dedicated staff. We have a number of volunteers. We have interns who come to us from Alliant University, USC, San Diego State, uh, they do a lot of the heavy lifting too, as, as well as some of our clinical social workers. So it's really a team. It relies on a lot of communication. We have to be in constant contact with each other about mm -hmm. what's going on and what's going on with this client versus that client. Um, it's like a little 
It's like a little community in and of itself. Yeah. Well, it's a mon monumental effort that you do, and you're so successful at it. It's it's mind-boggling sometimes. Uh, Eduardo, what of the of the programs you went through? What, what what's most important? What do you think had the biggest effect on you? I think the biggest effect that um, Stepping Stones, the program itself, had for me was the one-on-one -on -one with the counselor. Um, where I was able to talk about anything that I needed to get off my chest and um, also how, how the counselors uh, guided me, you know, to get out of my head in a sense mm -hmm. and, and turn it into, you know, what re reality is for me. You know, what I thought was my reality, they helped guide me to the, to the right place. Also the outside, like I mentioned before, the outside um, counseling is what they also guided me, mm -hmm. you know, because I, I, I knew I was addicted to drugs and alcohol, but I also knew that there were some other issues that I never dealt with before. And so, you know, they also guided me to the outside help that I needed. It was all part of a package, wasn't it? It was a package deal. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, they were able to separate the components, as you, sa as you, will, as you s might say, and deal with each one individually until you can get a handle on mm -hmm. your life. Yeah. That's wonderful. Yeah. That is wonderful. Um, your feelings when you first walked in the door, can you describe those for us? The feelings <laughs> when I walked in the door were, wow, a sense of defeat. You know, I was embarrassed, I was defeated, I was, um, I was lost, I was scared. But um, slowly, um, as I got into the program, um, uh, the family at Stepping Stone was able to love me, you know, as much as they could, it, because I didn't love myself at the time, you know. And so they loved me until I could love myself. And that, to me, I think was the huge, huge um, part of my life that has changed a lot. You know, the fact that I'm able to uh, sit here and, and um, share this with you is, is awesome, you know, because uh, I had no sense of direction in my life. I was lost. The this, this sentence, they loved me until I could love myself, yeah. is very powerful, very meaningful. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, now what, what you say you con you're connected with um, the Stone now, yes. and you uh, do some fundraising for the uh, for some of the residents that might need a few things. You cut hair, mm -hmm. and here you are as a representative, at least for today, telling us your story. And um, I want to thank you for that. Thank you. Appreciate it, uh, John. There are no free lunches, are there? You people do a wonderful job, mm -hmm. and um, it costs money. So how do you keep the doors open and the lights on? Well, it's been a particular challenge these past several years with the economic downturn that everybody is experiencing. Uh, we're fortunate that we have a lot of core support from the San Diego County Department of Health. We have a number of contracts to provide these services. But we also need to raise money from the community and other sources because we have a contribution we need to make. Um, so we have, with Bixie's help in the past few years, really uh, ramped up our community fundraising and special events activities. In fact, um, just uh, this past Sunday, we had a third annual Mission Bay cruise. Uh, some 150 of our supporters, donors, and friends uh, puttered around the bay on a stern wheeler while we ate some uh, chicken and listened to a comedian. Um, we're also looking at foundations and kind of innovative ways to raise money. We're looking at a couple of different business enterprises that we think could be not only helpful for our clients to gain work experience, but also bring in a new revenue stream to the organization. Mm -hmm. um, and then, of course, we're all kind of holding our breath as national health care reform rolls out, because mm -hmm. that's going to have uh, some implications for us as well. It's a big unknown right now, so it's very it difficult to plan, isn't it? It is. Uh, we think that a lot of the federal money uh, is going to get shifted and redirected, so mm -hmm. we have to be kind of nimble and ready for those changes, yes. and that's part of what we're doing right now. Yeah. Now, I notice you have terrific support in so many communities. By, by, by that, I mean you have uh, federal officials, elected officials that are uh, have uh, signed on to be to speak for Stepping Stone, mm -hmm. S uh, federal, state, uh, county, local. Yeah, Bixie really has a lot of our relationships um, 
that has really tended to those relationships. Yeah, Bixie, I'd be interested in how that works because I'm, I was amazed to see the support you have at that level. I think we should um, also recognize County Supervisor Ron Roberts who has um, consistently for the past 12 years made available special grants to Stepping Stone. Mm -hmm. And um, during the capital building campaign, um, Christine Kehoe, who is now a state senator, was a, a city council member at the time, um, requested a community development block grants for Stepping Stone, and she has been a consistent supporter as well. In recent years, uh, council members uh, called in Mayo and Todd Gloria, as well as um, Marty Emerald, have publicly supported Stepping Stone and attended our special events, open houses. And um, Mayor Jerry Sanders and the City Council pronounced um, June 4th, Stepping Stone Day in San Diego. Wow, how so nice. Yeah, we've, we've um, elected officials have really made a, a major contribution to the sustainability of Stepping Stone over, the, over all the years. And I heard your um, last fundraiser at the, uh, in the Bay went well. It was phenomenal. Um, the crowd was, was fantastic. It was hugely enjoyable and successful. And as a guest of honor, we had Bruce Villange on board. He, is, um, well, he has been for the past 22 years the, the lead writer of the Oscar jokes that um, nominees and hosts uh, read or mm -hmm. present during the Oscar ceremony. And he was absolutely hilarious. And, and I thought about it, um, how um, s several celebrities have have um, been interested in Stepping Stone and supported Stepping Stone over the years, including Leslie Jordan, Leslie Jordan, Lorna Luft, um, Kathy Griffin, mm -hmm. and for some reason we've worked mostly with comedians. Mm -hmm. Well, it makes sense because going on your path of recovery, surviving alcoholism and drug addiction is a laughing matter. It is something to be joyful about, to be happy about. But unfortunately, we cannot share with you any of the jokes that were done. <laughs> <in that laughs> so. Knowing Bruce <laughs> at his work, I can understand that. <laughs> but he is very effective, isn't he? Yes. As is Leslie Jordan. Mm -hmm. yeah. And the Stepping Stone dealers are, um, have been around since 1978. Mm -hmm. Have are always um, events that people look forward to, talk about. We, mm -hmm. we put up an exhibit uh, chronicling the 35th anniversary of Stepping Stone at this year's events, and it was hugely enjoyed. It's 35 years, isn't it? 35 and years, And I misspoke yes. earlier. Yes, congratulations, mm -hmm. 35 years. That's great. Well, last year we had a 10th anniversary celebration of the facility that was built. Mm -hmm. So we're trying to milk these anniversaries. <laughs> we're, we're trying to figure out what can we do next year. What, what are we celebrating next year? We'll come up with something. <laughs> well, your brochures are very effective. I have two of them, and I think they're okay, great. Thanks. They're very good. So what do you envision for the future? Well, I think the future is we keep doing what we do. And, um, you know, despite all the difficulties and challenges we've had, we are still helping people to recover every day. You know, we had a couple of new admissions this week, and we'll just keep doing that. Um, we'll probably keep doing more with less, too, because mm -hmm. we think that uh, we're, we're not out of the woods yet, that mm -hmm. there are going to be more funding cuts. So thinking creatively, um, you know, getting as much out of the dollars that we have now as we can, uh, reducing our costs, spreading that money as, as um, widely as possible. We are talking about opening up a new sober living home specifically for women. Mm -hmm. And in fact, I think Bixie can talk a little bit about that. We have a campaign right now to raise the startup funds so that we can have a dedicated sober living or transitional living facility for women. Great. We hope to do that next year in 2012. Bixie, tell us about that. Uh, the sober living program is an extension of, the, of Stepping Stone's residential program. Um, generally, individuals go through the residential program and then um, come back to the residence uh, for aftercare. And during that time, if they qualify for subsidized housing, we um, provide um, sober living homes. We currently have two homes. One of them is for um, individuals with HIV AIDS. And we have long talked about um, opening a home that is specifically available for women. Mm -hmm. Now you might wonder why. Why mm -hmm. do we envision a home that is um, that is not co-ed like the others have been? Um, counselors ha have determined that women do better in an environment that where they have more of a voice, 
and alcohol and drug treatment is uh, very much based on group interaction and speaking about your experience, sharing your experience. So um, studies have revealed that women do better in a specialized treatment and that extends to sober living as well mm -hmm. in an environment where um, they have a platform to express themselves among themselves. Sounds very interesting. Now, what can we do? What can the public do to help you do what you do? We do so well. But with so many uncertainties in our future economically, what can we do? What can the public do? Well, you know, the obvious is, of course, we would su appreciate any donations. But more than that, we have a number of volunteers who put in long hours. Edgardo's an example. I mean, he's a graduate of the program, but he's a volunteer. And we really rely on volunteers to help with everything from transporting clients to their medical appointments to sometimes finding new sources of revenue or support. Uh, some of our volunteers will go out and, and hit the street for um, donations of soap and shampoo, the kinds of things that clients need when they come right off the street, as mm -hmm. you mentioned. Mm -hmm. Sometimes people come to us and they're really destitute. Um, we're having a, uh, an open house in December. It's our third annual winter tea at the Stone. We would invite all, um, all citizens of the community to come and visit us and partake of some very nice English tea, mm -hmm. some scones, mm -hmm. some uh, little sandwiches. There'll be a roaring fire in the fireplace, and the place will look terrific. It'll be decorated for the holidays. Sounds wonderful. It really does. Uh, Eduardo. Yes. What would you tell someone who is either dealing with addiction or someone where the family is dealing with addiction? What would you recommend? Well, well, um, I would definitely recommend um, sending them to Stepping Stone um, and um, to love them as much as they can and to try to understand that um, this is a disease and that um, Stepping Stone is like an extended family mm -hmm. and um, not only like I said before and I keep on saying this, they won't just care for you, you know, and they will love you and continue to love you when you're in the program, when you're outside of the program, mm -hmm. and, and we'll love you until your journey of recovery is will never be complete, but continued. So would you say that unconditional love is, is the key? key. Is, is the key. key, key. Yeah. Is the love that they give, the acceptance that they have for you as a person, you know, because I, as a drug addict, couldn't accept myself, so I didn't think anybody else accepted me out there either. Mm -hmm. So coming in there, there's it's just love and acceptance. Yes. And, um, and I just don't say that because we're on a show. I say it sure. because the experience that's happened to me. I'm sure that's true. Um, we only have a few seconds left. Uh, basically, I want to thank you all for being here. And I think it's wonderful that you do what you do and you do it so well. You have a great reputation in the community of getting the work done. Uh, and the community is a lot better off because of what you do. Right. Thank yeah. you so much. It's been a pleasure, an absolute pleasure, and uh, I wish you well. Thank you. Thank you.